Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our today's saint is Saint Margaret of Cotona. Penitent was born in Loviana in Tuscany in 1247. Her father was a small farmer. Margaret's mother died when she was 7 years old and 2 years later her father married a second time. Between the daughter and her stepmother they seems to have been but little sympathy or affection. Margaret was one of those natures who craved for affection. When about 17 years of age, she made the acquaintance of a young cavalier who some say was a son of Guglielmo, lord of Valiano, with whom she one night fled from her father's house. Margaret in her confessions doesn't mention her lover's name. For 9 years she lived with him in his castle near Pontipulciano. and a son was born to them frequently she besought her lover to marry her he has often promised to do so but never did in her confessions she expressly says that she consented to her lover's importunities unwillingly even during this period margaret was very compassionate towards the poor and relieved their wants She was also accustomed to seek out quiet places where she would dream of a life given to virtue and the love of God. Once some of her neighbors bade her look to her soul before it was too late. She replied that they need have no fear of her for that she would die a saint and that her critics would come as pilgrims to her shrine. She was at last set free from her life of sin by the tragic death of her lover who was murdered whilst on a journey. Margaret's first intimation of his death was the return of his favorite haunt without its master. The haunt led her to his body. It was characteristic of her generosity that she blamed herself for his irregular life. and began to loathe her beauty which had fascinated him she returned to his relatives all the jewels and properties he had given her and left his home and with her little son set out for her father's house her father would have received her but his wife refused and margaret and her son were turned adrift for a moment she felt tempted to trade upon her beauty but She prayed earnestly and in her soul she seemed to hear a voice bidding her go to the Franciscan friars at Cotona and put herself under their spiritual direction. On her arrival at Cotona two ladies noticing her loneliness offered her assistance and took her home with them. They afterwards introduced her to the Franciscan friars at the church of san francisco in the city for 3 years margaret had to struggle hard with temptations naturally of a gay spirit she felt much drawn to the world but temptation only convinced her the more of the necessity of self discipline and an entire consecration of herself to religion at times remorse for the past would have led her into intemperate self-mortifications but for the wise advice of her confessors as it was she fasted rigorously abstaining altogether from flesh meat and generally subsisting upon bread and herbs her great physical vitality made such penance a necessity to her After 3 years of probation Margaret was admitted to the third order of Saint Francis. And from this time she lived in strict poverty. Following the example of Saint Francis, she went and begged her bread. But whilst thus living on alms, she gave her services freely to others, especially to the sick poor whom she nursed. It was about the time that she became a Franciscan tertiary that the revelations began which formed the chief feature in her story. It was in the year 1277. 
as she was praying in the church of the franciscan friars that she seemed to hear these words what is thy wish poverella which means poor ones and she replied i neither seek nor wish for aught but thee my lord jesus from this time forth she lived in intimate communing with christ at first he always addressed her as poverella and only after a time of probation and purification did he call her my child but margaret though coming led more and more the life of a recluse was yet active in the service of others she prevailed upon the city of cotona to found a hospital for the sick poor and to supply nurses for the hospital she instituted a congregation of tertiary sisters known as le poverelle she also established a confraternity of our lady of mercy the members of which bound themselves to support the hospital and to help the needy wherever found and particularly the respectable poor moreover on several occasions margaret intervened in public affairs for the sake of putting an end to civic feuds twice claiming divine command she challenged the bishop of arezzo in whose diocese cotona lay because she lived and ward he lived and ward like a prince not like a pastor of souls this prelate was killed in battle at bibiana in 1289 Sam and Cotona turned on Margaret even accusing her of illicit relations with Friar. The year previous to this Margaret for the sake of greater quiet had removed her lodging from the hospital she had founded to near the ruined church of St Basil above the city. This church she now caused to be repaired. It was here that she spent her last years. All the while Margaret continued to preach against vice and many through her returned to the sacraments she also showed extraordinary love for the mysteries of the eucharist and the passion of Jesus Christ divinely warned of the day and hour of our death she died on february 22nd 1297 having spent 29 years performing acts of penance and in this church she was buried but after her death this church was rebuilt in more magnificent style and dedicated in her own name there her body remains enshrined to this day incorrupt in a silver shrine over the high altar although honored as a beata from the time of her death She was canonized in 1728. Her feast day is on February 22nd. The original legend of St Margaret was written by her director and friend. It is almost entirely taken up with her revelations and was mainly dictated by Margaret herself in obedience to her directors. It is published by the Bolantis we conclude with a reflection we learn from the life story of this saint that seeking forgiveness is sometimes difficult work it is made easier by meeting people who without trivializing our sins assure us that god rejoices over our repentance being forgiven lifts a weight and prompts us to acts of charity We pray that may we meet people filled with that true love of Christ by which we understand how much God longs to have us back. May we receive a heart of repentance and thereby we be blessed and prompted with the spirit of doing good to the people around us. Amen. This is an initiative from the Catholic Women's Collective. the video prepared by resurrection church indiranagar thank you for watching may we be filled with good spirit amen